Imagine you are standing in a strange town. You pick up the phone and try to explain to a friend where exactly you are. You might say, I'm headed downtown. I'm about a mile away from my hotel. But that really only narrows it down to a circular arc centered on your hotel with the radius of a mile. You'll need to provide more landmarks to give him a good idea of your location. Something like, oh, I'm headed downtown, a mile away from my hotel, and I'm next to the museum across from the park. If you wanted to be really accurate, you might add, I'm about 40 feet from the park and the museum. What you are intuitively doing is called trilateration, or determining your position based off of distances from known points. The GPS, or Global Positioning System, works in just about the same way. The GPS satellites, space vehicles in the language of GPS, are your landmarks. Each satellite has a highly accurate atomic clock on board and their orbits are precisely known. In the United States GPS constellation, there are 24 satellites in six orbital planes. Each satellite completes an orbit in 12 hours. Other countries are also putting up satellite positioning systems. GLONASS is the Russian system, Baidu, formerly called Compass, is a Chinese system, and the European Union is actively launching Galileo satellites this year. The United States Air Force manages the GPS satellites, with the 50th Space Wing being the unit responsible. GPS satellites are continuously broadcasting on L1, 1575.42 MHz, and L2, 1227.60 MHz, carrier frequencies. GPS satellites communicate with GPS receivers using pseudo-random code, or PRN, which is a long string of ones and zeros that rides on top of the L1, L2 carrier frequencies. Each satellite has its own code, so that receivers don't get confused as to which satellite they are tracking. The Atlantic's POS-MV system has two L1, L2 capable receivers that are continuously receiving these signals from all satellites within view of the vessel. Having two receivers allows us to do some clever things with determining our vessel heading and error budget modeling. But how do we get our position? In order to determine our location, we need to know the distance to the satellites as well as the satellite's location. This is done by a technique known as satellite ranging, which is the process of deriving the distance between the receiver and the satellite. Let's discuss how this actually works. GPS receivers calculate distances to satellites as a function of the amount of time it takes for the satellite's signal to reach the ground. To make such a calculation, the receiver must be able to tell precisely when the signal was transmitted and when it was received. The satellites are equipped with extremely accurate atomic clocks, so the timing of transmissions is always known. Receivers contain cheaper clocks, which tend to be sources of measurement error. Knowing that the ideal speed of light is 186,000 miles per second, we can say that the distance equals the speed of light times the travel time. That single distance is going to tell us our location on a sphere surrounding the satellite. Adding another satellite will give us a position somewhere on the intersect between these two satellites. A third gives us two possible points, only one of which is reasonable, as the second is not near the surface of the Earth. A fourth gives us a three-dimensional fix and lets us solve for the clock error in our receiver, saving us the trouble of building atomic clocks into our smartphones. The relative location of these satellites and the constellation in our view of the sky at any moment is also important. If all your satellites were bunched over in one corner of the sky, they would not constrain your position very well. Ideally, you would want to use at least four satellites that were spaced equally on the horizontal plane as well as the vertical plane. By doing this, you would have a low horizontal and vertical dilution of precision, HDOP and VDOP. Combining these metrics gives you a position dilution of precision, or PDOP, which is a common GPS statistic. A PDOP value of two to four is ideal for survey work. Finally, let's tie all this into some things you might see on a POSMV screen. First, we can see that there are two receiver screens, which is what we would expect. It looks like we definitely have more than four satellites in view, so you would expect to have a good GPS solution. You can also see the signal to noise ratios, or SNR, for each satellite, letting you know how strong a signal you are receiving. You can see that the receiver is in 3D CA mode, and that we are getting a good L1 phase lock, which means it is picking up those PRN codes that we talked about earlier. 
Finally, we have an h-dop and v-dop of 0.677 and 1.092, respectively. This is excellent for our survey work. So what can we do to get an even better solution? And what sources of error are there? These questions and others will be addressed in part two of this series. Thanks for watching, and good luck out there.